And a lot of you guys know what's coming up next. It's the word chop, right? It's the word chop that everybody hates no matter what type of trader you are. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope you've had a great uh, week of trading. Obviously, a uh, crazy market, had a big, big run. Uh, nice rest for the tape, good healthy rest. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, just a quick announcement, uh, Kyler, who does a, a phenomenal, phenomenal job uh, doing all these videos and editing all these videos and all that uh, good technology stuff. He's gonna put a link uh, for all you guys who uh, are curious about pivots um, and always kind of wanted to try it. He's gonna put a link into the description um, for a, a discounted trial for the month to check out the webinar. Uh, again, I, I've been saying this for, for, for many, many years. I, I don't think pivots are for everyone. Um, it's a very unique and advanced way of trading. There's a lot of moving parts, but uh, for those who uh, apply to their uh, to their comfort zone and your account size and all that good stuff, it's a pretty, pretty cool way to navigate the markets. Obviously, I'm a little biased by it, but um, <laughs> Um, if you do want to try it, uh, he, there is going to be a link uh, in the description and you could take advantage of it. So let, let's talk about the tape. So marvelous run, uh, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal run uh, off the bottom, off this kind of double bottom uh, from the January, uh, excuse me, February 24th and March the 14th lows. Uh, we had a th almost three week run, uh, huge price action, expansion everywhere. Tech stocks just went absolutely nuts. And the question was going into this week, if you've been kind of watching the videos, uh, the question was, well, how long is this gonna last? Is this run going to be sustainable? Because again, the last thing you want uh, in any type of linear move is going up too far too fast or going down too aggressive uh, too fast as well. And eventually the other side of the trade uh, gets too complacent as well. And what happened was, was something that was very much needed, right? When you look at the scoreboard towards uh, the end of the week, you'll see the Dow, the S&P virtually flat on the day, uh, fl flat on the week. Um, the NASDAQ 100 eked out a seven tenths of a percentage gain. But the most important part was we needed that rest. Um, it was a good, you know, great run. The last three days of the week traded perfectly down to the 10 day moving average, reclaimed, held low volume. There was absolutely no aggression, there was absolutely no fear, just a good steady back test into recent price action. And that's what you need for healthy price action if the bulls wanna go further up. Now, the question is, what happens next, right? We, we saw this uh, phenomenal move down to the downside off the 200 day moving average, this great run to the upside. We hit the 150 day moving average kind of back tested. And the question is what happened in the past is in the past, we can't control uh, what happened letting, leading up to Monday's session, we could only control going forward. And there's going to be a very, very valid uh, argument, right? Or at least discussion of what happens next. Again, the bull case is, well, we had a two and a half week run. We back tested perfectly into rising support, great rest, good digestion. The longer uh, the bears are comfortable at these levels, the higher probability we're gonna reclaim uh, that 30, excuse me, that 372 area on the queues and start really going up into the higher channels of the daily and weekly supplies, right? That's the bull case. The bear case is, well, every bear market has a violent run. You can go back to 9-11, uh, you can go back to uh, the mortgage crisis, all that. You've had violent runs in a bearish scenario and now we're rolling over and now we're ready to go back to the lows. I, I, I think anybody who's trying to take a stand based on Friday's close is, is a little bit naive to think that they are 100% right. Number one, structurally we did the right thing. The bulls are not wrong, the bears are not wrong. But the question is, what happens next? And none of us know, we could only prepare for it. And usually what happens when you have 
a digestion cycle, really good distribution level coming off higher levels, you're going to run into contraction channels. And that's the kind of the theme uh, going into Monday, maybe even Tuesday. And contraction or distribution, which kind of basically means the same thing, it's kind of what we talk about, um, you know, from random times of the year of basically the bull and bear, right? And I've used this analogy uh, before. It's the bull and bear in a tiny little phone booth, right? When there's no room and they're having a pillow fight, right? They're trying to have a fight with each other in a phone booth. And you, we all know if you're standing in a phone booth, you have no room, you have no reach, you're not doing any damage. So you're not going to get any fear, okay, on the downside until we start breaking down like literally all this. And you're, you're not gonna get that massive aggression to the upside because stocks are very, very tired, which is gonna cause contraction channels in, instead of the expansion channels that we saw on the way up. And a lot of you guys know what's coming up next. It's the word chop, right? It's the word chop that everybody hates no matter what type of trader you are, but that's necessarily what's gonna happen because now the next stage of where we are now, not where we came from, but where we are now is who gets control, right? Who gets control of the next leg down? Do the bears, you know, get below all this rising support and start going to the lows or the bulls uh, get a good, good uh, structural rest, start attacking the top of the channel and we go further marching uh, back to all time highs. That's to be determined. But once that's happening, you're going to see, for example, uh, a stock like Amazon that usually will have like a 70, 80 point average true range, maybe go down to 30. You'll have maybe a stock uh, like a Tesla, we'll get the Tesla in a second, uh, of an average true range of $45, $50, maybe get down to 18. So what's gonna wind up happening is bull and bear are gonna take, a, take jabs at each other. Nobody's gonna get ahead. Nobody's gonna do uh, any damage. There's just gonna be a lot of noise. And what that's going to do is cause a lot of traders to pull out their own hair. Market sucks, it's too choppy. Well, if you know the market is going to be choppy based on this possibility, well, why put yourself in a position to get quote unquote chopped, right? Let the market play out here. It's not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be a week, two weeks, three week type of scenario. And even if it was, you have to be an adult enough to kind of let it play out. But this should, this should play itself out Monday, you know, maybe going into Tuesday session. Eventually the sellers will clean up the buyers and stocks will go lower or the buyers will clean up the sellers and stocks will go higher. Until that happens, why would you possibly, again, step on a minefield knowing it's there if you don't have to, if you could avoid it, right? Let the other people do the legwork for you. Let the market participants churn themselves into oblivion knowing we're in a contraction, a contraction cycle, a distribution cycle, whatever you wanna call it. Let them do the heavy lifting for us. You know, when the bodies are, are, are on the ground and the smoke is left, we're gonna have a clear direction by Tuesday going into Wednesday, Wednesday session of if this market's going higher or is this market turning around and going lower. And this is where people, you know, this is where people use the word patience and use the word discipline, but how many of us can actually implement that, right? The, the hardest thing in the world for a new trader to do is kind of sit on their hands. It's the hardest thing in the world to do because they feel, and this is primarily because of social media, because social media is saying there's something going on at all times, but what you don't realize that something that is going on has nothing to do with your approach, has nothing to do with your process, has nothing to do about the stocks that you trade, and it's only the, the lights, camera, action that social media is providing, and that's cool, right? But if you are an adult, and if you've been trading for seven, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, you kind of know that this is your opportunity to get a mental break, to kind of get a, uh, a mental rest, and all of us burn so much mental capital, mo so much mental equity throughout the trading year, throughout the trading years, that you need to kind of pick and choose your spots to kind of deflate a little bit, right? Let it rest. Let other people, you know, have the fight for you, and let you know after it's all said and done, give you a clear view of what's about to happen next. And when you're going through a distribution cycle, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to have a lot of uh, strength in the morning, and then you're going to have some afternoon selling. You're going to have some afternoon selling, and then you have strength in, in, in the morning. And it's going to be a whole bunch of things. Strength and weakness are going to be represented sometimes in the same channel. Strength and weakness are going to be separated sometimes in the same group and sector. And you're going to be very, very confused. I don't understand. The stock was strong in the morning. How could it sell off? Well, I don't understand. The stock was so weak in the, in, in the morning. It was about to crack opening range lows. How's it at the highs? Yeah, well, that's what distribution is. And if you know the danger is going into this week, 
Again, why would you put yourself in a situation to wake up, start pounding your chest, your, your chest start screaming, is it Monday yet, is it Tuesday yet, is it Wednesday yet, and, and get completely engulfed by this chop factor that potentially could happen. It's very, very out there, it's, it's out there, and the, the question is, are you going to give into it and just trade because the market's open or put yourself in a position of strength, right? There's a big difference between when you hear social media as the market is going lower and in a downward cycle, cash is a position, sit on your hands. Yeah, that's an excuse. But when you have a, a trendless market going through a distribution, sitting on your hands, or maybe I don't wanna use that word, but kind of patiently waiting for your pitch, you're kind of patiently waiting for a little bit more clarity, that's called being a mature adult. And I do believe in the next you know, in the first day or two of the week, we are going to see uh, many more clues. We're gonna see a lot more option flow coming into the market because if you guys notice Thursday into Friday, it was pretty much dead, right? You saw the options market very, very quiet. Nobody was really taking any big bets uh, one way or another as we saw earlier in the week, as we saw earlier in the last couple of weeks, very, very aggressive out of the money uh, call buying. We didn't see that. And, and, and people are, you know, have been through the ringer so many times they get, you can't bet when there is no obvious direction. You can't bet when there's no obvious aggression. And I think a lot of people uh, are taking the stance just like myself, just kind of seeing what, what, you know, what there's out there. Are, is there gonna be things to do on Monday? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Tesla, and, and again, it's, it's, a, it's a funny story. Uh, a year ago, I, I turned to my wife, I go, you know what, I, I think it's time, I think I want a Tesla. And she goes, she turns to me, she goes, I like them, she goes, but everyone has one. I, I don't want one, everyone has one. And she's right. Everyone has one, that's the whole point. Everyone has one. And when you look at the global uh, deliveries, right? They, I think uh, they were th uh, 310,000 that came out uh, over the weekend. It's a phenomenal job. Everybody's a freaking Tesla. Th my neighbor to the left of me has three of them. My neighbor to, to in front of me has one. And my neighbors to, to the right of me, there's another three in the next four houses. So yes, everyone has one. And that's a really, really great job uh, by Tesla, not only turning into a car company, which is also uh, a tech company, which is also a solar company, but now it's clearly a cult company and everybody loves their products just like uh, an Apple. And it'll be very, very curious to see what happens uh, with the stock on uh, Monday. Uh, did they blow away their, their uh, estimates? No, they didn't blow them away, but it's super duper impressive. And I'm very, very curious to see if they finally start attacking the top of the ranges here. Uh, if you guys remember, we did see pretty heavy betting uh, earlier in the week for uh, the 1150s. I guess they were anticipating betting into these uh, into these into these data release points. Uh, so it'll be very interesting to see here. Obviously, I watch Tesla every single day, but I'm curious to see if this top of the channel gets uh, uh, confirmed and gets built upon uh, based on these numbers. Uh, when you look at other tech stocks, they're all stuck in the range, right? They really are, they're all stuck. I'm not really interested in names right now like an Apple because again, there's no clear direction. It held the 10 just like mirrored, uh, just like mirrored um, the Qs. If you look at Amazon after a huge, huge run, again, they could go one way or another. Again, we're looking for clues. Again, if, if Amazon is gonna, is gonna wake up and we, had, we saw some pretty big uh, uh, May, right? May 3,500 calls. If it's gonna start going to 3,500, right? We're gonna need to see it uh, take out this whole channel and reclaim back uh, the 200 day moving average. There's a lot of names like that. There's definitely some names uh, that look pretty good going into this week. Uh, look at a name like Docu, and again, it might confirm, it might not. Again, it's only gonna be as strong as the tech stocks, but if you know it's basing out pretty well, if the market continues its next leg up, you know, I'm definitely interested in a name like this. Uh, look at Visa, right? Uh, Visa had a monster, monster run, uh, closed above the last two channels, back tested like everything else, had a good healthy rest, and looks like now it wants to resume. Uh, look at a name like uh, Zen, right? Not a name I usually would, would typically look at, but again, you're not gonna see many good looking charts that look like this. Look at the top of this channel here, right? It never went down as the market was kind of healthy uh, back testing. So it's very, very important to kind of look out for names like this. This looks pretty good as well. And on the downside, you know, look at a name like FedEx that completely engulfed literally two weeks worth of buying 
on one candle. If FedEx starts confirming to the downside, well, there's a lot of room back down as well. So, you, you know, you have to be prepared going into this week, but you also do have to acknowledge that going into Monday's session is not like going into last Monday's session when the market was still very, very aggressive and channels were still expanding. You know, this is a different market every single day. Is it is it's only as good as the next day starting pitching. That's what momentum is. And I do believe if I'm reading the data right, and again, I could be wrong, and I always am, but the point is if I am reading the data right based on where we are on the cues, number one, what's gonna need to happen for further aggression to occur back to the upside, we're gonna have to reclaim the five-day moving average. And that's kind of a big deal. If we can't reclaim the five-day moving average, and for all you guys who are uh, you know, short-term uh, traders. That's the most important, at least for me, that's the most important uh, sentiment of who has control when you're underneath the five-day moving average. That's not necessarily a sell bias, but there's weakness when you're above the five-day, because you can see here, the whole run came, you see this orange line, right? The whole run came above the five-day. Everybody see it? Everything here, it's all straddling the five day. As soon as we lost the five day, right? What happened? We started seeing weakness. So it's a kind of a, a little bit of a cheat sheet, especially for all you new folks. Above the five day is trending higher. Below the trend, the five day, it's a short term sentiment of trending lower. So if the bulls uh, need to or want to start reclaiming back to higher levels, we're going to need to reclaim back uh, the five day moving average on a close. So the message going into this week. It's pretty much every single week. Be an adult. Again, I don't care if you're trading for 25 minutes, 25 months, or 25 years. Act like a professional. Your money is just as green as everybody else's. You've worked as hard as for your money as anybody else's. And the great part about this is business is everybody has a form. Everybody has a right to make a bet. But if you are making a bet, make it intelligently based on technical analysis, based on market sentiment. Feel, gut, anticipation. These are all easy ways uh, to get out of this business before you reach your max potential. Guys, have a great, great Sunday. God bless. I wish you all the best, health and happiness. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great, great trading day.